Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is Understanding and Classifying Quadrilaterals. Uh, this is part one. So, quadrilateral, it has a very scary sounding name. Quadrilateral is a simple concept. It just means a four-sided figure. A figure that forms a closed shape that has only four sides, not five sides, not three sides. Remember, three sides is a triangle. Well, anything that makes a four-sided figure we call a quadrilateral. Now, we have lots of different kinds of quadrilaterals. We're going to go through them several times. I have some slides here, and we're going to go through them a few times so you understand what they are, and then we're going to solve a few problems so that you understand what the different quadrilaterals really mean and how to practice that. So, here we go. We're going to go through them fast the first time, then we're going to start back over and talk a little more. And for now, I want you to ignore all of this colored text. Don't even look at it, because I don't want you to focus on that in the beginning. I want to go through it and get the big picture, and then we'll cycle through it again and talk about these details. All right, we have a parallelogram. You can think of it as a slanted rectangle. It looks like a rectangle, right? But it's slanted. So we're going to go through the, the, the details in a second, but that is what a parallelogram is. Next, we have a rhombus. It looks really similar, but you can think of a rhombus as a slanted square. Remember, a square is a figure that has four equal sides, right? And there's some other things that we'll talk about in a second when we get to square. But a rhombus is a slanted square, so you can think of it that way. So we have a slanted rectangle, we have a slanted square. Now we get to the concept of a rectangle. Uh, we're not going to get into the details here. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but you can see two of the sides are parallel. These two sides are parallel, but a rectangle has four right angles. And when you see four right angles, you know that the shape is not slanted. Because if it's slanted, like here, these angles cannot be 90 degrees per uh, perpendicular like that. So that's why there are no squares in the corner over here. But for rectangles, we know that we have four right angles. Essentially, that's, that's what a rectangle is. Then we have a square, which is a type of rectangle that has the same sort of thing, four right angles, but it also has equal sides. A square has to have equal sides and four right angles. That's why I told you that a rhombus is like a slanted square, because a rhombus has to, it has to have four equal sides as well, but the 90 degree angles are, are not there. That just means it's slanted. And then we said a rectangle here had uh, the four 90 degree right angles, and then we compared that with a parallelogram, a slanted rectangle, a uh, similar sort of deal, but we don't have these right angles. Again, we're going to cycle through them a little bit more detail on the second. We're just getting the big picture. Lastly, we have a kite. That's four-sided figure as well. A kite is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, where two of the adjacent sides, that means the sides that are right next to each other, are equal, these sides are equal, and then also these sides are equal. We'll get, we'll talk more about the kind of the math speak in the bottom, but basically a kite has that typical kite shape because these are equal and these are equal. All right. And then finally we have a trapezoid. A trapezoid kind of looks like a rectangle, but obviously it's not because we don't have these 90 degree angles. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute, but a uh, trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, but the other two sides are not, not parallel. All right, so we have the six quadrilateral shapes. Now we've kind of got the big picture. Now we want to cycle through them again, talk about them a little more detail. All right, back from the top. A parallelogram is just a four-sided shape, which means a quadrilateral, where opposite sides are parallel. That's why it's called parallelogram. You have to have parallel sides. And the opposite sides are parallel. That means this side is parallel with this side. That means they never intersect if I were to extend these lines. And this side is uh, parallel with this side. But notice that it doesn't tell me anything about the angles in here. So the uh, parallelogram in general can be slanted as much as you want uh, there, or it could be straight up and down as well. And so uh, any shape that has opposite sides that are parallel like that are, is called a parallelogram. For a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel and WZ, which means this line segment, is equal to, which means the same length as XY. And WX, this side, is the same length as this side, ZY. So when you read through this math, you really need to read it and understand what it's saying. All this blue stuff is telling me is that this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal in length to this side. And the other thing is that they have to be opposite sides, which are parallel. So ultimately, in your brain, it's going to be a, a rectangular shape that can be slanted. That's all a parallelogram is. Now, these uh, green things are telling you that the angle XWZ, XWZ, this angle, 
is the same as this angle x, y, z. So all it's telling you is that this angle is the same as this angle, and you can see from the figure that it looked to be about the same. And also that this angle here is the same as this angle here. So what it's telling you is that in a parallelogram, opposite pairs of the sides are parallel, and opposite pairs of sides are the same length. This means opposite sides are the same length, opposite sides are parallel, and opposite angles are also parallel, okay? Now keep that in your mind, and let's go compare that to what a rectangle is. A rectangle is a type of parallelogram. How do we know this? Because it says right here, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Because remember, a parallelogram means opposite sides have to be parallel. Okay, check. This is parallel with this, and this is parallel with this. A parallelogram, opposite sides have to be equal length. This side's equal to this one, this side's equal to this one, check. This means opposite angles are equal. That's all this green stuff is telling you. This angle is equal to this one, and this one's equal to this one. Opposites angles are the same, check. The only difference between a rectangle and a parallelogram is you have four right angles, and that's what makes that rectangular shape. Up and down, and then side to side like this, it's perpendicular 90 degree angles in every single corner. Right? Now, if you read through the math, all it's telling you is OL is equal to MM. OL is equal to MM. It's telling you that this side is equal to this one, and this is telling you that this side is equal to this one. This is telling you that this angle is equal to this one, and this angle is equal to this one. It looks like a bunch of math gobbledygook, but if you read through it, that's all it's saying. Angle NOL, NOL is equal to OLM, OLM, right? So, uh, in, so all the opposite angles are the same. In fact, all the angles are the same for a rectangle. Now let's go back here. We talked about parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite lengths are the same side, are the same si uh, length. Opposite sides are the same length, and also op opposite angles are the same. So a rhombus is a type of parallelogram that has four equal sides. Literally, it's the same thing as a parallelogram, but the sides are equal length. That's why it's a slanted square looking thing. All this math is telling you down here is that this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side in length. And this angle is equal to this angle, and this angle is equal to this angle. That's all that that math is telling you down there. And then we can turn our attention to a square, because a square is a special case of a rhombus. Right? It's a rectangle with four sides. That's true. But a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. Uh, here, and we know that a square has four equal sides. So if we know it's a parallelogram, because it tells us right here, a rectangle, it's a rectangle with four sides, and we know a rectangle is a parallelogram, but we know it has four sides, that's exactly what a rhombus is. It's a parallelogram with four equal sides. So essentially, you have this rhombus thing, this parallelogram with four equal sides. If you make the angles 90 degrees in the corner, you get a square. Four equal sides of a square four 90 degree right angles. So from the top, we have this parallelogram. It's a slanted rectangle. When you make these angles 90 degrees, it becomes a rectangle. When you take your parallelogram and make all the sides equal, you get a rhombus, okay? When you take a rhombus and give it 90 degree angles in all the corners, you get a square because you have equal sides there. And then we talked about a kite is just uh, when you have adjacent sides what we call congruent, which means they're equal in length. This is congruent to this, and this one is congruent to this one. That's all this is telling you. And then you have this trapezoid. A trapezoid is when you have two opposite sides parallel. That's what this means. HI parallel to KJ. These are parallel, but the other sides are not parallel. Because if they were also parallel, it would, they would be a parallelogram. But since you only have one pair of parallel sides instead of two pairs of parallel sides, we call it a trapezoid. All right, so we've gone through it, and now what we want to do is put our problems on the board to practice our skills. First problem, here is a uh, quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. We want to first answer what type of quadrilateral is it? Well, we have this side parallel to this side, and this side parallel to this side. We don't see any 90-degree angles, and we know that all four of these sides are not equal. That is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a shape where opposite sides are parallel and where two of the sides are equal and the other two parallel sides are also equal. That's exactly what we have. Equal, equal, and equal, equal, and parallel, parallel, and parallel, and parallel. So we have a parallelogram. So instead of writing parallelogram out, I'm gonna write parallelogram. 
You can write parallelogram a million times if you like. I'm just going to write parallelogram there. All right, next question. Uh, what line segment is parallel to WZ? What line segment is parallel to WZ? Here's WZ. The parallel line segment has to be this one, which is XY. XY. So XY is the line segment that is parallel to WZ. All right, problem number two. Here we have this quadrilateral, this four-sided figure. What type of shape is it? Well, we have parallel sides here and parallel sides here. That, right away, uh, in addition to the fact that this looks to be the same length as this one, and this one looks to be the same length as this one, that looks like it's a parallelogram. So you could say that it's a parallelogram, which is true. This is a parallelogram, but it's a special parallelogram. It's the type of parallelogram that we actually call a rectangle, which is a parallelogram that has four right angles in the corner. And that means that the sides of the parallelogram are going to be straight up and down, which is what we know a rectangle is. So because of that, this shape, you could put parallelogram, but it's more specifically called a rectangle. So you can just put rect there. And we want to answer the question, what is the measure of angle EFG? EFG, that's this angle. The measure of this, you see the square means it's a 90 degree angle. So we know because the uh, shape has a little square in the corner, we know it's 90 degrees. All right, we have this quadrilateral on the board. We want to answer what kind of shape is it? Uh, well, it looks like a kite, and so we know it is a kite, but why do we know this? It doesn't specifically say on the drawing. Usually, to show that two sides are equal, you put a little line through it here and a little line through it here. That means these sides have equal length. And then to show that these are equal length, you can mark it with a double line and a double line. So the double lines mean those are congruent. Congruent means equal length in a drawing. And these singles go together as being the same length also. So if the drawing is like this, you know that these are the same length and these are the same length. It's a quadrilateral where two adjacent sides are, are the same length and two uh, the other adjacent sides are the same length. So you know that that is a kite. Right? Because a kite has the definition that it, it doesn't really say here, but it's saying that adjacent sides are equal and the other two adjacent sides are also equal. That's what a kite is. So this is a kite. And then the next question says, what line segment is congruent to BC? To BC, what line segment's congruent? It has to be this one, which is CD. This line segment here, CD, is congruent to BC. All right, here's our next figure. What shape, what type of quadrilateral is this? Well, we have a pair of parallel segments here, but the other sides are not parallel. So this cannot be a parallelogram. For parallelogram, you have to have opposite sides, both pairs of opposite sides, to be parallel. But these are not parallel. Only one side is parallel. And so because of that, we have a special name called a trapezoid. Trap e -zoid. Trapezoid. And if you want to convince yourself of that, make sure you understand that. A trapezoid just means HI, in this drawing, HI, was parallel to KJ, this one. It means these are parallel. Doesn't matter what the rest of the figure looks like, those have to be parallel. When you only have one pair of sides which are parallel, it's called a trapezoid. Now the next question, what line segment is parallel to KJ? KJ is this one, the one that's parallel to KJ is HI. So the one that's parallel to KJ is HI, like this. All right, the next problem. First, what type of shape is this? Well, we have parallel, parallel, and also parallel, parallel. And it appears that the length of this is the same as the length of this, and the length of this is the same as the length of this. We didn't mark it. If you wanted to mark and show that, you would say this is, is the same length as this, and this one is the same length as this one. But more than that, they're actually all equal to each other in length. It looks like this and this and this and this are all the same. So we can mark it. We can put the double marks everywhere or just single marks everywhere. And that means that all four sides are exactly the same length. Four sides exactly the same length, four 90 degree angles in the corner. We call this a square. We call it a square. And the question is, name all segments congruent to LM. All segments congruent to LM. So it's just going to be all the other ones. We have MN, which is this one here. We have NO, which is this one. And we have OL, which is this one. So all of them are congruent to uh, the segment LM because they're all the same length, uh, all equal length with each other. 
All right, here's our final problem. What shape is this? Well, it looks like a square that's tilted on its side, and so you should start thinking about rhombus. Now, what is a rhombus really anyway? It means that we have a parallelogram where four sides are equal. This is parallel with this, this is parallel with this, and it appears that all four sides are equal, even though I didn't really tell you that. If I wanted to really tell you that, I would just mark a congruency line here. These little marks mean all four sides are the same length. So you have all four of the same length, you have opposite sides are parallel, that is what a rhombus is. Go back to our definitions. It's a parallelogram with four equal sides. Opposite sides are equal, opposite angles are also equal, uh, and of course it's a parallelogram. So this angle is equal to this one, and also this angle is equal to this one. So we call this a rhombus. All right, and the final question, uh, what angle is congruent to angle QTS? Angle QTS. QTS is this angle. What angle is congruent to this one? It's the opposite angle is congruent. We can call it QRS. Angle QRS. QRS, this angle is congruent because opposite angles are congruent or equal to each other in a rhombus. So we have conquered the idea of quadrilaterals. They seem very, very confusing at first, but then when you start realizing that you have the general shape of a parallelogram, and then the other ones are like mostly subsets of that, then or special cases of that, then it becomes a lot easier to understand. So I'd like you to go through this again, make sure you understand what the different shapes are, make sure you understand how we got the answers to all of these problems that we've done, practice them yourself, follow me on to part two, we'll get a little more practice.